All right, everyone. So uh, we've done uh, a lot of uh, JavaScript so far. Uh, there's still plenty more to learn, but uh, let's look at something that is um, tied to the newest uh, standard, HTML5, uh, about being able to find our location. So I'm going to open my web browser and let's go to w3schools.com and pretty much everything I've been talking about comes from there in different chapters but I want to direct you uh, to one particular chapter so let's go to w3schools.com and then we'll look at um, Let me see, actually, it's over here, isn't it? Um, yep. All right, so uh, we, we go to w3schools.com, and we're going to go into the section here about Learn HTML5. This is, this is new, uh, relatively new, the ability to be able to tap into these extra features that were never part of the standard. Now they're, they're new. Uh, this is HTML5, so on the left side here, Select Learn HTML5. Notice it breaks it down step by step. Learn about headings, learn about comments, etc. I'm going to scroll down. Keep going over to HTML5 APIs. <laughs> These are new features of, um, of HTML5. Uh, geolocation. So in a moment, we'll see how can we find out the coordinates of your location. There's some, something new uh, for drag and drop, the ability to click on something and drag it across the screen. That, that was not part of the original standard. Local storage. This is sort of like cookies, but on the next level. A cookie has been around since the early days of the web, which just saves a little bit of simple data to your web browser. Like if you visited a site, it might set a cookie that says you were here on January 1st. So when you come back to the site, it knows you because you logged in, let's say. That was a cookie. Local storage is the next level of that. It can save even more data. Whereas a cookie, let's say, it could save 100 kilobytes of data. Uh, a local storage could save like 5 megabytes or 10 megabytes of data. So much more data in the modern versions of HTML. And other things like the app cache and other stuff. But uh, here... I want to look at the HTML geolocation API, the, the, the code to make geolocation work. HTML geolocation is used to locate a user's position. And if you haven't been to W3Schools yet, you'll see that the way this works is it gives you examples, and then it's got a Try It button. So I click Try It. I'm getting in Firefox a pop-up that says, would you like to share your location? So I'll click, yeah, share my location. And something happened. Oh, there it is. And then a map shows up. Now, because I'm on the desktop, it didn't get my accurate uh, location. And I bet if I go on my mobile device, it'll be more accurate. But uh, okay, that's the result. Cool. Uh, how does it actually work? So uh, if we go down, it says, what versions of the browser does it work? Internet Explorer 9 and up, most Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera. No geolocation is much more accurate for devices with GPS, like a mobile device, iPhone, Android. How does it actually work? Uses the get current position method to get the user's position. So get current position, this and the way this is written looks like JavaScript. Basically it is. It's JavaScript that gets translated, or HTML that gets translated to make it do something. This particular example, again, there's a try it yourself. Uh, and it's got the code written for you. You click Try It. I get the pop-up. It's going to try to get my location. And then it shows up here. Latitude, longitude. And if we break down what their code does... Like, are they exactly the same on your desktop? The same coordinates? Yeah. It must be uh, downtown San Diego. 
that there's a there's an error, so it gives us a default. It's not an error. It's returning the computer IP address and whatever happened here is the IP address. Ah, okay. Okay, that would make sense too. That it is that's not an error. That it is getting the IP address of our master uh, plug into the internet in, in general, which is City College. Uh, but what I've got here, okay, doc type, HTML, body, P, there's a paragraph with an ID, demo. Click the button to get your coordinates. There's a button on click, get location function. And then there's a script, get location. Uh, now, they're doing something else a little bit different here. There's a variable that they created called x, document get element by ID demo. That's how they're able to... We did it that when we click the button to type our name, then the button disappears. Here they're kind of cannibalizing the same thing in that it shows click this, and then it replaces what's inside of it at a later point. So we're just referencing some element on the screen. In this case, notice it was P. It was S. Can we can we add an ID to paragraphs? Yes, we're seeing it here in action. <laughs> so then get location is saying, first of all, this is this is being a little bit more safe in that geolocation doesn't work on older browsers. So if you tried to use this on a browser that didn't support it, nothing might happen. The user gets frustrated and say, okay, bad software. Well, it's not that. It's that the browser's old. So what they're doing here is something we haven't talked about yet, but there's an if-else statement. And this is basically JavaScript's way of um, making a decision. If something is true, do this. If it's false, do that. Yes or no, to make a decision. Here it's basically saying, if the ability to check the geolocation works in your web browser, then let's get your current position or else it doesn't work. So make something else happen, which is on screen, inner HTML, geolocation is not supported. So if you do have geolocation ability, get the coordinates. If not, just show on screen, this doesn't work. And we're seeing here, navigator.geolocation. We saw navigator before for... Um, what did we see it before? Navigator dot something. You only mentioned it. You didn't actually have oh, okay. So we had document dot something. Navigator dot something. Here it's actually being used. Navigator. So navigator is something the browser defines. Navigator is technically the web browser. It's all of the, it's all of the uh, the features of the web browser. Yeah. Uh, in this case, the web browser, the navigator, we're saying, let's tap into the geolocation feature. Uh, yeah, is the name for that that go back to uh, Netscape Navigator? Okay. Recollection of the object was named based on that. It could be, because ne uh, Netscape were, were the ones that developed the original JavaScript, so they may have uh, named it after themselves. Navigator.geolocation, specifically get current position. We'll see in the documentation there's other things we can do, such as give me a live readout of my location and, and that sort of thing. But this one it's saying get me the current location. Where in the world are, are we? And what happens is it gives us a bunch of coordinates. Uh, then that has the, the trappings of like a function. Well, what, what do we do with it? Show position, which down here we've defined show position. We're saying the placeholder, because we defined a placeholder, basically this paragraph, demo. The placeholder changes inner HTML to say latitude, and there's the plus symbol, like we did previously with the variables. Show me position.coords.latitude. Position comes from here, which comes from getting the coordinates using get current position gives you results. It gives you x and y, it gives you latitude and longitude, it gives you the time that you did it, other things. Specifically, we're saying give me the position, the coordinates, latitude, and then also show break, 
longitude and position coordinates longitude. So after all of that, the result is that when you click the button, the web browser, the navigator asks you, can we, can we get your location? And I say, yes, share location. So it'll do the if part, the positive if part, which then outputs latitude and longitude. Uh, just kind of like the raw numbers. I'm going to try it again, and if I click uh, not now, I guess it doesn't go into the error part because I do have the ability to do geolocation. I just canceled it. But uh, we're going to do this ourselves in a moment. But this is the code that will allow us to tap into GPS. Yes? So it shows position as a function, but it doesn't have where would you see the parentheses? In, in here? No, above. What are you calling it? Yeah. Can you explain those two lines on the board? Yeah, one, one at a time. So this one you're saying, why does it not show, does it not show quotes here? Uh, no, um, parentheses. Parentheses. Is it in the function? Oh, uh, yes, uh, right here. Well, the thing about that is if we go back to the previous page and read the documentation, it'll tell us how to write it. So it is going to want to run a function here, but the syntax of get current position will confirm that it doesn't need it. So we, we are going to run a function, but the documentation is set up that you don't need to write the parentheses. So that's confusing, because I would think, okay, I'm going to write parentheses here. I'm actually going to write parentheses there. I'm going to click Try It and see what happens. That's, what, that's what's cool about W3Schools. You can actually do it. No, I'm sorry. I need to submit. To submit the code, try it. Not working. So the documentation uh, says when you do get current position, uh, you have a parameter of a positive result, comma, a negative result, not shown. And those would be functions, but we would not write the parentheses there. It's just that the standard was not set up to use parentheses there. Did that answer your question or what else? Yeah, I'm kind of curious, and how is it doing passing the position parameters? This is another thing that it's built in, and this is what an, this is what an API is, an application programming interface. It's, def, it's, it's a series of definitions of, of functions and, and methods that are, that are set up to give a result. <laughs> so what we're seeing here is that when we run get position, it does its magic, it gets the coordinates, and it, and it gives back a result, uh, an array most likely. It gives back results. And uh, I'm saying here, um, I'm going to take those results uh, and feed them to this function, pass them into this function position. So that way then I can call, this can probably be called anything, you know, cat. And then all I have to do here is say cat. Give me all the data. Right now all the data is being stored. All the data that we're getting out of get current position is being saved, you know, being passed through here, and we're defining it as cat. So here's the cat coordinates and cat latitude. And then it's going to pass the data through and show it there. So here, that's basically holding all of the data we get out of get current position. Specifically, what data? Coordinates, latitude, and longitude. So this is more, more like an asynchronous? No, it's not, a, it's not asynchronous because at the moment that you said get current position, it will check what the current <coughs> position is. Yeah. Capture that, and then you can work with it. Asynchronous is a different... Is a no, different. There is a way, right? So it's... It's passing on the values to that uh, function, right? right? Show position. Show position, which is a function. Mm -hmm. uh, it's calling that once it gets the results and it's passing on the position. Yeah. So this might be working in uh, asynchronous mode. Um, not sure. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and read the documentation to be f to fully be able to answer. I, I think the question that you're asking, but. Yeah, this is dependent. So position is dependent on get current position, if that's mm -hmm. It's more like a callback, right? I mean, yes, this is a callback. That is a callback. That is a callback right there. 
the API is get current position, and this is a callback function. There's a function defined, and the data is passing through into it. We just depending what you use for those questions. Okay. Question. What's the order number? Uh, Technically, yes, but because uh, the web browser can parse all the data in milliseconds, uh, it uh, seems to work without, uh, you know, it is working from top to bottom, left to right, and it gets to this point, and then it jumps to the point as necessary. Um, I don't really think about it. There is a, there is a definite definition of how exactly it works, but it just works. Yeah, but in, in, in this case, so the question in this case, like you try to show function. Yeah. It should still work. Yeah, because I mean, from the browser, you are jumping into get location, right? And from get location, you say it's calling that show position. So I put show position first, and I click the button, share location. I mean, button is for get location, not for show position. True, but it's still, even though I've said, here's what show position means first, and then I used it here, it still worked. And then previously it was use show position and then define show position. They both worked. Yes? So in most languages like this, the function definitions are not executed as it's scanning through the program. Storing that information in memory, and then it's only when you get down to the button where you have the, the triad that actually calls one of those that mm. it's actually trying to run. So it should already have it in memory by that point. Yeah, so it does scan through it, keeps it in memory, and then calls it as you trigger it. And we triggered it once we did the triad. So this is one of the this is this is a confusing thing for for people about. Okay, yeah, you've been saying it goes from top to bottom left to right, but here it was backwards. And that's true, but it does go through the whole program and puts it in memory and then the function doesn't run until we need it once we trigger it via try it. No, actually try it is not calling show position. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a consequence of it because up here we've got uh, we click the button which, which gets to, which does get location, yes, which does get location right here. And then a consequence of get current position is run show position, which goes back and runs show position. Right. So it's being called from within the location. Yeah, get location is technically calling show position, not the button. But it's a consequence of calling the, of hitting the button. Okay, so I'm going to go back and... Uh, so that was the example here. Try it yourself. It explains what's happening. Check if get location is supported. If supported, run the get current position method. If not, display a message to the user that you have an old browser. If the current position method is successful, it returns the coordinates object to the function specified in the parameter show position. The show position function gets the display gets and displays the latitude and longitude. And this is very basic with no error handling. And this one's a little bit more complex where it's actually going to check. Well, these are the possible errors that could happen. Permission denied. I could, when it pops up, would you like to share location? I click no. Well, here's a way to deal with that. Case error, permission denied. And then deal with, um, doesn't work, user denied. Well, it could be position unavailable. I didn't cancel it, but my GPS is broken. Position denied. So that's the result there. Timeout. The GPS is trying to connect to the satellites, and it never does, I guess. Timeout, request timed out. An unknown error, if all else fails. And then, of course, try it yourself, see exactly how it works. Display the result in a map. This will make a simple map happen, it's, but it's, it's, it's a static map. It's not the kind of map that we'll do in here. It's basically going to show a picture a simple picture of a map. It's going to take your coordinates, latitude and longitude, uh, from the from the previous function, create a variable, grab the picture from Google Maps, and then display the picture 
uh, on screen. So it'll be just a static picture that it grabs at that moment, but you're not going to be able to drag it and zoom in and do all that other cool stuff. And then here's a, here's a list of all of these possibilities. We have coordinates, latitude, longitude, accuracy, altitude. We can get altitude out of this if supported. Heading, speed, and timestamp. Watch position. This one is like turning it on and when you're, when you're driving, it's always showing you on the map. It's following you along the map. You can do that as well. It's going to eat up your battery, yes. <laughs> so uh, let's do a very simple version of this ourselves back in our document, uh, and then we'll be getting close to wrap it up. So let's go back to our practice file here. Let's make a brand new button. So this is going to be triggered via a button click. Let's make another button after our change background button. I'll just call it GPS. That's fine. And make it a button. <coughs> Give it an... Uh, no, we don't need the ID at the moment but it needs an on-click. We'll call this get GPS function. We're going to make another button and it's going to have an on-click of a function get GPS. So we need to define a new function up here. Function get GPS. So basically trigger action trigger result. Within the function, we'll say um, navigator.geolocation.getCurrent position, notice the capital letters, current capital letter, position capital letter. Open, close, parentheses, semicolon. And um, this, the get current position would, uh, would, would capture the coordinates, but then nothing would happen until we give it what is, what is known as a callback function. Like, okay, you ran a function, but what do you want to do with this? So in the parentheses here, uh, we can say uh, show position. And that's, that's a function. But we don't write the, the parentheses there. It's just that it, this was designed to, you write the, you write the name of the function there and then it, uh, and, and then it knows that's a function. Show position. So after the function of get GPS, then I need to define what does show, show position actually mean. So another function, show position, Oops. 
So here we're going to say get GPS. So it runs get GPS, navigator, geolocation, get current position. The result of that is to then take that data uh, and, and run it through show position function. Here we're about to define what show position function does. And then we need to say within these uh, parentheses, uh, we're going to deal with the data itself, so we can call this anything. Uh, we'll just call it, well, well, we'll be consistent with what W3, 3, W3 school shows us, which is position. We could, but we're going to make it in a pop up box instead of on, on this, on, in the body. Show position, and uh, we'll do it with a pop-up box, so that you you can't miss it. We'll do alert. And in quotes, we'll say latitude is colon space. So we we want to have a space right here in the quote because it'll literally write this on the screen. If you don't put a space here, the, the numbers will be right next to each other. So even a space counts here. A space doesn't count in other parts of HTML, but here in the quotes it does. Uh, so we want to say, okay, show the words latitude is, after the quote, space plus, position dot chords C O O R D S chords coordinates chords specifically latitude So I wanted to show latitude the word latitude the phrase latitude is the number whatever the latitude is and then on the next line longitude so I want to make a new line here, uh, and here's the trick. So plus, and because the spacing and such doesn't matter, I'm going to press enter here just so that it breaks it up like this, and say in quotes backslash. This is an, this is a backslash, so it leans back backslash n. That basically means new line, like an enter, space, uh, longitude. So I wanted an enter. I could use a break, br, sure. But here I want to show you this is a, an escaped, an escaped character. It's a new line, backslash n. It's like an enter, colon, space, After that quote, plus position dot chords dot longitude. This could be all on one line. I don't have to break this to a second line because this continues. <coughs> Open and close parentheses. This is all part of the alert, but I'm breaking it up so that I can see the latitude is on the first line and the longitude is on the second line. But it won't actually break until we write the backslash n. So show position will run and show something on screen after we do get current position, which runs when we click the button, because get GPS is called when we click the button. Let's give it a try. Save it. Double check your spelling. Click the button and Firefox should request to see your coordinates. Click accept and it might take a moment to try to find some coordinates. You should get a pop-up screen. That's what alert does. And show you the coordinates. Let's see. All right, so I've saved it. There's my new button. Click it. Pops up. Would you like to share your location? I'll say yes, share location. Wait a moment. There we go. 
I had to wait a moment for it to get the coordinates because get position was running. It was waiting for the coordinates. Once I got the coordinates, it ran show, f show position function. Show position is make a pop-up. Latitude is blah, blah, blah. Longitude is blah, blah, blah. So we're writing JavaScript, but it's um, HTML5. It's compatible with the newer web browsers. If we were trying to run this, you know, five or six years ago on older versions of the web browsers, uh, nothing might have happened, or maybe an error happened, or who knows. This is a very simple thing here. The W3 example is, is better in that it checks, does this even work with your browser? If it doesn't, display something. If it does, then try to deal with the results. And then it goes on further to deal with possible errors. Which one doesn't work? If you put a VR, it Oh, okay. Um, really? Yeah. VR. Hmm. I would see why that would make sense. So VR. <laughs> okay. So yeah. VR. That's why we use the new line. All right, so this was today's crash course on uh, JavaScript. Uh, we're getting closer to doing what I want to do. This is one piece of the puzzle because, okay, I want to take these coordinates and actually display a map. And I want to deal with those issues about what if I don't have GPS. Uh, I want um, to deal with that. And then I want to display it nice and pretty in my in my web app. I want to display it in uh, jQuery mobile. That's why we started this empty JavaScript practice file because I don't, I don't I, we're gonna get lost with already 200 lines of code about what's already there. I want to focus on just this. In, in our in, in playing around here, we've we've created forty four lines of code, or so. Um, to to kind of understand this a little bit. Question. Mine is telling me that it's not. Okay, it's probably the spelling. Uh, we're going to do uh, lab time in just a moment, so hang tight just a bit. Let me just do something here for my OCD. So here we go, a perfect 42-line web page. 42 lines. All right, so any general questions? I'm going to put my code in the, in the folder in a moment. And we're going to wrap it up and have lab time. So, we didn't do anything on our main project, but I'm going to put my uh, I'm going to put my jQuery practice in the network folder. 